Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here and today I want to walk you through my basic settings on my camera when I'm out doing some wildlife photography. So I'm at my local nature reserve. Uh, let's get cracking and show you how I'm set up. Right, so I'm all set up and ready to go. So let's talk through my basic settings for wildlife photography. Now, one of the first things to understand with wildlife photography is there isn't really um, any given settings that you have to use. Um, some people try and tell you that there's a certain shutter speed and f-stop you should shoot, use for wildlife photography, but it's absolute twaddle. The trick to getting exposures and stuff like that right is understanding exposure as a whole, and that's something that every photographer has to do. You need to understand which uh, shutter speed and f-stop you should be using and how to up your ISO to make sure that you're getting the correct uh, shutter speed for what you want to do. Um, there's a couple of rules that you can definitely adhere to um, that are going to be really when you, good when you start out. Um, for example, if you're using a long telephoto lens like this, um, just making sure that your shutter speed is always twice that of your focal length. For example, here's a 300mm um, and I tend to try and use a shutter speed of at least 640th of a second um, to make sure that when I'm shooting on, with my long lens, I'm going to freeze uh, the action and reduce any camera shake that I might have. But other than that, in reality, it's all about the exposure that you want to create. Um, if you want to have a lot of depth in your image, well, you need to you know, close up that aperture and use f8 or f11 to get some more depth of field. Um, if you want to blur out everything and have a really clean portrait, then of course, you're going to want to move down to f4 or f2.8. And understanding those settings is how you really get um, the creative exposures. So let's talk more about how we actually set up the camera. Um, now first, I'm in manual mode. Um, I'm always in manual mode. Well, not always. I'd say probably 80% of the time I'm shooting in manual. Um, and that's because 80% of the time I have the camera in my hand. 20% of the time I might be using a remote camera, uh, a camera trap, something like that. On those occasions, I might be using aperture priority um, because I want to be able to vary my shutter speed to get the correct exposure. Now, if you're just getting started in wildlife photography and manual mode seems like a bit of a, you know, a worry, something you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. Um, if you dive in at the deep end, you'll find that you will make mistakes when you get started. Um, but as long as you don't let that dishearten you, I think you'll learn a lot quicker and understand um, how to actually make images out in the field. So moving on to autofocus, I'm always in continuous autofocus because basically I want to be able to track my subjects when they're moving. Um, and what I do is a lot of the time is I just have it locked to the middle autofocus point. It's the most um, kind of reactive, it's the most sensitive, and it's the one that will pick it up in the lowest light. Um, the D500 here goes down to minus four EV. So even when I pretty much can't see my subject, uh, the camera can still lock focus. Now I use rear button focus, um, meaning that my camera will only focus when I press the AF on button on the back. It's very frustrating when you've got it on the uh, autofocus, well the shutter button, um, and you go to frame up a shot, you've got it all in focus and everything like that, you move your composition slightly because you want to get it perfect, you press it down and you autofocus, pings off into the background and locks on something different. That never happens to me now because of course, you know, if I just have locked my composition in, everything's focused where I want it to be, I take my finger off the autofocus button and I can press the shutter button and I know that it's going to take the shot and it's not going to try and refocus my uh, image at all. And that's so useful if you're working uh, where you're trying to focus through foliage, you know, you're working through little branches and trees, stuff like that. Um, using rear button focus is a really good thing to get, uh, get to grips with. Um, you know, you're going to find that the first couple of weeks that you're using it, you're going to go, God, why is my camera focusing? Why isn't it focusing? Oh yeah, it's that button on the back. And you will do that. You will do that quite a few times, but eventually it'll just become second nature and you will never pick up your camera and try and auto focus by pressing the shutter button. You just don't. It just becomes second nature. Get it in, have a go and persevere. Now, other than that, especially now on the new modern cameras, one of the other things I do is on the joystick here, you've got an extra button. Um, and if I press in the joystick, what it will actually do is start my autofocus, but use the multi-pattern 21 point autofocus. And this is phenomenal. It's so good for picking up birds in flight um, because basically I can go from shooting a static portrait on the ground with my single point focus and then press in the joystick, get 21 point autofocus and lock birds in flight so quickly. So, so, so handy and really, really quick. It means that I never have to take my 
eye from the viewfinder when I'm out shooting and I can go from uh, static birds to birds in flight without having to like flap around and you know change auto fo focus settings on the side you know at the end of the day with wildlife photography uh, and any photography for that matter what you want to be able to do is change absolutely everything whilst looking through the viewfinder when you can do that then you can just focus on your images and nothing else gets in the way and that is the key so when i'm shooting i'm always in uh, continuous high um, it means i can have you know use my high frames a second for those fast action moments. But one thing it's really good to know how to do is just practice on how to get a single shot off because you'll find that when wildlife's coming towards you, um, if you press a single shot, a single shot, it's just gonna have less of an impact um, and not freak them out as much. If you go, you're like, yeah, oh my God, there's a fox coming towards me. You are gonna scare it away it's not gonna come back. Learning how to just be reserved and tactful with your pictures, just framing up. Just like that, it's gonna give you much better results. So that's pretty much it for how I set up my camera for wildlife photography. Hope you found that helpful, hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, any thoughts, uh, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. But as it is about to throw it down with rain, I am probably gonna get my gear covered up, my hood up, hunkered down because I'm still waiting for some wildlife. I hope some stuff turns up, but I got a very, very good feeling that I'm just gonna get absolutely saturated today. So uh, yeah, join me again very soon.